Mario Liscano. Present. Alex Rios. Present. Ricardo Pedraza. Absent. Sonia Falcón. Here. Present. Johnny Rodriguez. Here. Present. Ernesto Sepúlveda. Absent. Lisanne McAlpine. Present. Present. Okay. Alma Caso. Present. Jose Delgado. Absent. Dr. Annabel Palomo. Present. And that is it. I know that we've been contacted. We're going to have some uh, of our members who are going to be excused for today. Um, so do I hear a motion to go ahead and excuse our board members for, from this meeting? I'll make a motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? A second. There's a second by Ms. Caso. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Board members are excused from this board meeting. Next we'll go on to our organizational business. We have uh, in front of you the approval of the minutes for December 1st, 2020, regular called meeting. Is there any questions or any additions to the minutes that were presented prior to this meeting? If there are no questions, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes from December 1st, 2020? So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Rios. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Falcon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Minutes for December 1st, 2020 have been passed. Next, we'll go on to the consideration of and action of any on the treasurer's report of account uh, summary period ending December 30th, 2020. Okay, so, so before you on, on uh, section C, you have the budget report summary. Um, this is provided dir directly to us uh, from uh, the CFO from Carla. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I did have a question for um, Lisa, but she answered the question regarding one of the items. But other than that, everything seems to be in line. Thank you so much, and thank you, Ms. Sonia, for reviewing that, and, and for Carla from the city for providing the information that was presented to each and every one of you all. Uh, if there are no questions, do I hear a motion to accept the treasurer report of account summary as presented? I'll make a motion. There's a motion by Mr. Rodriguez. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Rios. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The treasurer report of account summary has been approved. Next, we'll go on to our two items, which we have should, should be first one, the discussion review of partnership with CDBG with financial resources from the COVID-19 CARES Act. Absolutely, thank y'all for having us today and happy new year, super excited to get 2021 underway. Um, as we discussed in the last two meetings, we were trying to find resources for our business community. And with so, we had deployed our phase two um, we've had 70 uh, respondents to date, but the good news out of that is 23 of them have been linked back to CDBG and they're processing applications to see if we can get them some COVID CARES money. So I'll have more updates coming soon, but um, you brought up a great question on my last meeting. What are we really doing to fill the gaps with the, the small businesses that are having financial problems and are seeking the resources? We did align um, one of our items on the questionnaire that lined with CDBG, so good news. So, so do we have a list of the businesses that we've reached out to? We do, and um, I have it for everybody and I can send it to y'all. Um, some of the new, so we've reached out to a ton, but respondents, we've had 70, so I can give you the information on the 70 respondents. So I, I think what we want to see is from when we started to now, what has been the difference, you know, as far as last month to this month, how many have we reached out to? So when you first started last month, how many had you reached out to? We reached out to a lot. We reached out to all of our work safe plan and then to our phase one. Um, and then how many people, how many businesses does that? Oh, mean? Sonia, it was about 1,500. So you've already reached out to all 1,500 businesses? Yes, ma'am. And so you you have the list of the 1500 businesses yes. that you've reached out to mm -hmm. so is that project completed it is not completed it's ongoing and just to refresh everybody's memory the phase one that pdc did 
started in April and ran right around October. We've been in it about a month, so I, I anticipate us surpassing what they're at today. They had 420 people respond in a span of seven months. So it's ongoing and it stayed right, in the back the, burner. This doesn't tell us what it is you're doing, right? This just gives us like, it's out there, this is what it is. They've requested help, but it doesn't tell us specifically, you know, hey, here's what we started with, here's what we've done, and this is what we're pending, right? So we're pending 23 applications that are going through CDBG right now, and those are people that are having to fill out applications and bring back information that's being requested from them. Okay. So out of the 1,500, only 23 have requested help, or was it 70 that requested help? 70 have responded, in there 23 have requested federal help. So the, of the 1,500, 70 re, uh, responded, and what happened with the rest of them? They haven't responded. But we also have to take into account the last time that we met, we really had two weeks of business. We met in November, and we had Thanksgiving, or I'm sorry, we met in December, we had Christmas, and we had New Year's, so we really had two weeks of business happening a lot of people have been out and so I anticipate it taking off here by the first of the year um, a good news is Danny Ramirez with our communications department is resending out the work safe plan to everybody that's doing business in the city of Bar, and he's adding our survey in there and having it be a second part to when they fill out for work safe so I think it would be important that we get that information right because that way we know how all this is being filtered. You give us this, we don't know. You know? And so I think it's important to understand how the process is working. So when you said you reached out to 1,500, how did we reach out to those 1,500? We reached out multiple ways. We made phone calls to everybody that submitted a certificate of occupancy from June to, oh God, December 1st. So we got that list and then we also emailed everybody that had submitted a work safe plan. And so has anybody closed since then? Yes, I did get an email from somebody that said, and I couldn't give you the name of the business, but she did tell me I've closed, so I do not need to fill out the survey. I don't need any help. And so what, what is being done with those businesses that have closed? Are we following up to see if they're gonna reopen or are they just gonna stay closed? Or? So I did follow up with her and asked her if there's anything that we can do on behalf of the chamber to help support, and she said no. She's decided to close and right now it's just not the right time for her. Happy to share the email with her with you if you'd like to reach out as well. Yeah, if you can send us that list of the 1500 and then the 70 that responded. Absolutely. Excellent, any other questions or any other um, remarks? If there are none, we will go ahead and move on to the discussion and review of partnership of Southwest Early College for FAR Social Project. So here over the last few months, we've talked about social and getting our business members up to have being able to, to have a social platform and so forth. The interesting thing is one of the questions on our questionnaire is do you have access to internet? 97% said they do. Um, we had very few people tell us that they, they do want help with social media. So what we're using that data for is coinciding with um, the Far San Juan Early College, Southwest Early College reached out to us and they have a group of high school seniors, a few of them are college students as well from South Texas um, College and they are going to work with us to establish a grassroots approach post COVID, really create these viral um, TikToks, viral kind of Snapchats where they're increasing market share to these small business. So I'll give you an example right here. So we're going to have Taco Tuesdays, and um, what it will be is these children, these students reaching out to La Hacienda Carmelita, some of our smaller Mexican eateries, and creating this viral content, um, the best taco in far, um, really being able to get out there to a consumer that would not have known what they have to offer. Motivational Mondays, we'd like to focus on like RGV College, a mo motivational Monday on how someone can change. Gold's Gym, who is also a member of ours. Um, RGV Food Bank, which is also a member. You'd like to be inspired, motivated to go into the new year. This is how you can help on Motivational Monday. Um, to Go Thursdays, 
obviously we know with COVID, a lot of businesses are suffering. They really don't want people going in and sitting. So what are some of the businesses in FAR that offer to-go menus? Fazoli's, Raisin Cane's, Rudy. So we're gonna partner with these program, these businesses, but also with these children to create this viral content that we can then blast out all over social media. Retail therapy th when, uh, weekends, where we can focus on the Sears um, of the world, FAR Town Center, Pretty Pink Boutique, and then other different things that FAR has to offer. But we're really hoping that this will help us put um, FAR on this social media new kind of atmosphere. But um, it also coincides with our FAR is open. And then this is the team of, of students that are gonna help us. So we have Jose Rodriguez, um, Jimena Rocha, who's also an STC graduate, um, Montserrat Marquez, Angel Torres, Samira Garcia, and I think she's Marcela Trevino. So we have this group of students that are gonna help us. We're super excited about it. Um, Mayor brought it to our attention and love to see the collaboration between the chamber and our community members. Mm -hmm. These students seniors, juniors? So a majority of them are seniors. We have one sophomore in there and then one of them's a college student over at South Texas College. She just graduated with her associate. So how is this gonna be maintained? Since they most have a, of these kids are gonna graduate, I don't know that they're gonna wanna continue doing this. There's a, um, an instructor there, Dr. Jennifer, I'm sorry, Jennifer Burden. Um, she's going to oversee the program along with their student teacher. And she is that we're gonna go ahead and evolve it and see right now it's a test and learn. We're gonna try it out <coughs> for the spring, see how it works. If it's something, a collaboration that works well, that we can make longer, then we'll figure what we're gonna do moving forward. That's excellent. And as far as the monitoring mm -hmm. of the actual uh, collateral, that'll be done by your team? And Absolutely. So before anything's posted, we're asking that they submit it to us so that we can see what they're, um, what we're putting out there. But okay. some of the, the content that we're looking to get is this monster taco at La Herradura. This is what FAR has to offer. Come and get yours today and stuff like that we're going to direct them on what the content should look like. Excellent, and also, and so all of these are members of the chamber? Some are members, some are not members, but we're also extending the 180 free, day, free membership to them so that they can become members so that we can collaborate with them. And I was gonna just yeah, say exactly that. We wanna make sure that we are uh, first trying to reach out to our members and then from there also entice new businesses for us to, to get new members, so good job on that, I like it. Absolutely. Thank I you. think it's a great idea. Uh, Bert Ogden's is currently using students to do uh, TikToks, mm -hmm. and that's just gone viral. Mm -hmm. It's been really neat collaborating with a lot of these students, and I think that's a great idea. TikTok is where it's at right now, I think, and I mean, we, we brought, I want to say five of them on board, and it's worked excellent. Excellent. It, it does two things. Thank you for that feedback. Um, it does two things. I think um, when I was an early professional, I joined a chamber because I wanted to get networking opportunities and so forth. At a young age, these kids are going to be exposed to business atmosphere, exposed to a chamber lifestyle that maybe they can carry on throughout their professional career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can have junior ambassadors, you know. That'd that, be neat. That, do the, be neat. the social the media. So mm -hmm. that way there'll be that follow up and it just mm -hmm. doesn't drop like once they're gone. And I think that's the point yeah. that you had. Yes. So you kind of have like a mentorship kind of program. Like that way it can continue. I see it doing very promising things for us. I really oh, do. Yeah. Yeah. It's good marketing. Yeah. And I, th I think that leads to, uh, and I'll, I'm sorry, I'll come back to you, Lisa. And I think that leads us to exactly what we need to do is actually have a strategic uh, planning workshop. So what we already had in place. Uh, we can also include this um, that's new so we can make sure that we're also adding on to our actual objectives that had been provided prior to this. I mean, this is not something new. Absolutely. This is an actual existing chamber and we're trying to work from there on. Lisanne? No, I think I was. Oh, gonna I was gonna, I, was, I had two <laughs> Sorry, questions. Um, I, I also really like this I idea. I think it's very interesting. I think it's gonna do great, um, the idea of the per day, I think that'll be great too. I have two questions on the students. So one was, how were these students selected? 
did they apply or did you all select them? And then second, how and where will they be working on this? Will they be working all together in, in one place or they just have assignments that have to be completed? So they will have assignments that need to be completed. We will give them, for example, a motivational Monday. These, and I don't want to limit their creativity because obviously a 45-year-old compared to a 17-year-old, their creativity on TikTok is a lot better than mine. But we'd like to give them some parameters and tell them this is Motivational Monday. These are the four people we'd like to focus on. Their teacher is oh, selected each and every one of them after she came in and visited with Mayor Hernandez and talked about this program and how we can get community members, students, to help with our efforts of building the social media presence for some of our struggling businesses. So they were handpicked by their um, teacher, and then aside from that, she's going to mentor them um, and walk them through the program. So it's going to be managed. Oh, good. And, and the employee, the businesses, they have signed off to that, or? No, these were just examples that we were throwing out there just to get the creative juices flowing. Okay, so what is our process with the businesses? Because what do they say, well, I don't want it. I think a lot of them be, will be very receptive because we're marketing. We we we're marketing for them for yeah, free. For we free. need to get sign off. For oh, yeah, them. yeah, we can do all that. So I just want to make sure that you're getting <coughs> some sort of a release from them saying, yes, we're okay with participating in this project, you know, because if they come back to us, and we just started using their name without their authorization, they could get upset. Absolutely, and the initial, so here we're bringing it up to the board to get y'all to, um, we, we haven't started it yet, but we wanted to get y'all's y'all's opinions and feedbacks on what we how we can make it better. Once that was has gone through the system, we wanted to call our business owners and reach out to the Dr. Palomos of the world and say, we're going to do a motivational Monday. How do you feel if we partner with RGB College? and uh, I'm hoping that a lot of our business members say yes. The twofold on that is we did have some community business members say, I, I need help. I, I want the help. Please reach out to me. And that I have on a list. Okay, so we just need to get signed out because I don't think Bert Ogden would be real happy if they just started promoting it without your authorization. You want to control your message, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's that's yeah. the point I'm trying to make mm -hmm. is, you know, some of these are smaller businesses in Bert Ogden, but we don't want to impose ourselves on them without getting their authorization. Mm -hmm. I think if they're requesting that, then they should be okay, but I think we need to have something in writing saying we're okay with that. You know? Absolutely, we can put that together, and I'd love to send it off so that if y'all have any feedback. Um, thank you, Alma, for your um, comment, I guess about a month ago, in regards to like updates. So I've been sending the board updates on everything that we're doing, so I can include it on the update so that y'all know exactly what we're doing and how we're um, engaging with those businesses. I think more than anything, what Sonia is trying to stem off of is the content. As a business owner, you want to know what's going out there. And I'm, I'm a firm believer, like even grammar, grammatically correct and stuff like that. I've had stuff that I've had to correct when it's out. It's, it's the reputation of your business. So if anything, maybe even them looking at the post prior to you all even posting it, just to see the content. Absolutely, great feedback. We're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be doing several things with doing this. Obviously, this organization relies heavily on ambassadors. I think that for anybody who has experience in chambers, ambassadors are very, very a key element to this organization. And by educating our public, our children about helping and giving and promoting businesses, you're doing them a great justice because they're able to market, they're able to do things mm -hmm. on social media, which is where we are at. Social media is what rules. But in, in echoing what they're saying, I definitely do understand that, that yes, it's gonna build a relationship between you and the business. You get to see this video. This child gets to see it as well and then be a transition of making decisions. And I think we're gonna do good things with it. But yes, let's just keep in mind uh, the businesses that we're grading and see what kind of reputation they want for them. And, and I think mm -hmm. we need to um, formalize if we're going to have junior ambassadors um, the program, right? Because I don't think any of the other chambers do. Do you guys know? The, the schools it? have them. The the school districts some do have ambassador programs, but it's by, the by school. No chambers, no. No, yeah. but that's they, what I mean. They the use chamber. the chamber uses them through the leadership program. Uh, mm -hmm. I happen to chair the uh, leadership program with the education session. And what we do is we contact the schools, and they already have ambassadors in place, so we do connect chamber to school right, ambassadors. But, th but this one's specific to media, right, and to social media, right? And so they are related to the chamber. 
um, on the social media side, right? Yeah. And so I think we say, okay, we want juniors and seniors every year, and then we give them a certificate saying, welcome to the junior chamber, our chamber. <coughs> um, and then we also give something back to them for their challenge, right? I like that, that's nice. It is, I like that idea. That'll work great. Um, and we can continue to discuss and review and, and formalize whatever uh, requirements might be needed or asked for from it so we can make sure that um, well we can bring it up in any type of workshop to see if this is one of the goals that we're going to be following so with that said any other comments or questions before we move on no if not we will go on to our uh, president's administrative report on the activities and announcements of the four uh, topics that were provided and then we'll finish off with the upcoming events so I'll go over what we did here in December. Last minute, in an effort to really boost our local economy and get uh, people a little bit comfortable about going out with social distancing and all of the COVID uh, precautions in place, we hosted a holiday market with the city and um, everybody was, was filtered in through the chamber and we were out there on December 13th very nice we had 15 vendors and all of these vendors had homemade um either it be chocolate bombs or lotions um, handmade jewelry handmade painted hats it was a very nice event and everybody that participated was very excited um, they've asked for another one so i do have a meeting this afternoon to talk um, to city about maybe implementing a standing market for our local our local little entrepreneurs that don't have a platform. They're not really that flea markety kind of person and they don't have a, a brick and mortar store. So it's just like a market so that they can be able to showcase their items. Excellent. Then, Go okay. ahead. So then one of the other things is um, we had we, in an effort to bring people too far to eat in our restaurants and shop in our stores, we did um, partner with the city on the music at the hub this is an opportunity that I can see for futures, maybe getting it sponsored by a business and having music at the hub on the weekends, all brought to you by the Greater Far Chamber of Commerce and whomever the sponsor is. It went very well. We got a lot of uh, media press on it. We had a group of children, um, and I can't pronounce their name. It's a 2C41. Um, group, but they're very good. They play at the McAllen Food Park, and um, they're a good group. They brought in a lot of people to come see them. Hmm. Then we got invited by Dr. Hernandez um, and Frank Nunez to go to Tropic Star for their holiday luncheon, brought to you by um, Lone Star National Bank. It was really nice. There were a lot of people out there. We gave away about 100 prizes. Um, and it was really coupons and some of our Greater Far Chamber of Commerce um, tchotchkes. But what we realized is that Winter Texan consumer really wants to know more about um, the chamber. So talking about possibly doing a Winter Texan Appreciation Month for February to see if we can get some of those 100,000 participants that come to the RGV to come and spend their time and money in bar. And then last meeting, y'all asked about social media um, analytics. So Facebook, January 2020, we had about 654 likes. Um, January 2021, we grew double, so we're at 1,700. A lot more work needs to be done. We need to get those likes up, but we are seeing progress. We're up 163% year over year. And then if we go back, we installed our um, tracker for our website and we've started working on the website. So if you go into our website, you're gonna see a new feel. We've cleaned it up a little bit, but it's not far from perfect. We're still working on it, and that's going to be a work in progress probably for the next 60 days. Um, but we do have about 492 individual visits in December, and we're seeing about 50 people daily. But what we try to do is on our website, give resources. We gave resources to the small business development um, corporation, we gave business uh, resources for UTRGV. We're trying to fill it with resources for the business community. And then we have 34 people that, part that are partaking in our free program that we're running right now. And here is a list, I'm happy to send it out to everybody, but um, these are our new members and they've been added as of this morning into all of our programs. 
Congratulations, Abdel. Yeah. Been doing a great job. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Thank you. And that's all we have. Can you uh, bring up the upcoming events? I know that you have several that um, we have. Before we go there, um, since you mentioned that Dr. Hernandez is looking at having something in February, I guess, of this year for the Winter Texans. No, um, he, parti he partook in a tropic, uh, tropic RV luncheon. And what stemmed from that is the possibility of having a Winter Texan Appreciation Month. Nothing to do with Dr. Hernandez. He partook in the other event. I understand that, but does he want to do that? Does he want to have a Winter Texan Appreciation? Because we used to have the golf tournament, mm -hmm. but that didn't happen this year. So does he want to do something in February for that? I have not had a conversation with him, but I'm happy to bring, bring it to his attention. Well, you're the one that mentioned it, so that's why I'm asking. Wiley, do you know anything? or? Sure, we can do it. I'm sure the mayor will be opposed. We can do it. I'm just saying. really put together packages of coupons and getting all of our chamber members so raising canes top golf main event even our golf course to give us coupons and be able to give our winter texans coupons to visit some of these locations we had a ribbon cutting yesterday at infusions they've already sent us their coupons that we could include into anything that we do so it's really a coupon base to drive traffic because I think it, it, it is a good idea to have a winter Texan appreciation and maybe you know do something small this year but next year because we have our schools that have the mariachis and the folkloric dancers and the winter Texans eat that up you know and so you know we need to once that gets back to normal have something and use that entertainment and they'll come running you know um, <coughs> so uh, but again you know I just I it needs to be planning right you can say it, but if nothing is executed, then nothing happens, right? And so we need to document which of these we're going to do. So for example, we've already said, and I think the board was very comfortable with doing the junior ambassadors, right? So let's formalize that program. If we're gonna shoot for doing a Winter Texan Appreciation Month, then let's formalize that, right? Where we have triggers that we need to execute in order to get it done. So we had infusions yesterday. Um, the market at the hub is going to be a moving target. We have a meeting this afternoon to discuss it. I'm thinking maybe later on in the month, but similar to like Harlingen, they have first Saturday of the month. The chamber has a market days. I'd like to see the same thing happen to the city of FAR and the greater FAR Chamber of Commerce. And then we have our seminar on 12-12 and thank you, Mario, for hosting our last one. We had over 600 views. So 600 people wanted to know more about COVID and how it impacts their business. So thank you. It was very, it was very, it was a lot of information that was greatly needed. Excellent. I have any other questions or any other upcoming events that to be discussed at this time? We will go to number five, adjournment. Alex Rios and second by Mr. Johnny Rodriguez to adjourn this meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Meeting has been adjourned at 1229 p.m. Thank you.